Welcome to the Private School Leader Podcast, where private school leaders learn how to thrive and not just survive as they serve and lead their schools. I strongly believe that it is possible to have a long and happy and fulfilling career as a private school leader. And my passion is to help you figure out exactly how to do just that right here on the Private School Leader Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Minkus. Every year at my school on March 14th, we celebrate Pi Day. Pi Day is March 14th. It's 3.14. Of course, you know from your middle school math class that 2 pi r or 2 pi times the radius of a circle gives you the circumference of a circle. And 3.14 and then the the non-repeating um, number that exists to infinity after that is pi. And so at our school, it's become a tradition that on March 14th, we celebrate Pi Day. And so in our middle school, we have various activities in the afternoon where we have the kids measure round objects and play a game called Pie Face that involves whipped cream and solving problems and we actually have a contest to see who can recite accurately the most digits of pi to the right of the decimal. And then, of course, which is really the excuse um, that I, the part that I like the most about Pi Day is that once we've done all of our activities, we get to eat some, some pie, some apple pie or some cherry pie. And so why am I talking about Pi Day? Well, I actually want to tell you about someone named Rajveer Mina, who holds the Guinness World Record for best memory. And the way that they decide, they being the Guinness Book of World Records, decides who has the best memory in the world, who holds that world record, is that they blindfold someone and then they just have them recite the digits of pi. And Rajveer Mina memorized and recited 70,000 digits to the right of the decimal point. And he did that in 2015 in his hometown of Valor, uh, India, and holds the world record for best memory. And as private school leaders, I think that we have an excellent memory about some things, and then we have a terrible memory about other things. So let me give you an example. I think that when it comes to things where we have an excellent memory, such as the bell schedule. At our school, we have an eight-day cycle. We have a different schedule on Wednesdays and on Fridays because we have a late start on Friday and we have a little bit of an early um, end. on. Um, we have a late start on Wednesday. We have a little bit of an early um, end to the day on Friday. Um, and so that's a lot of different bell schedules, but as private school leaders, somehow we seem to know and memorize all of that. We probably know almost all, if not all of the students' names in our school. And, um, we even can remember a small detail from a meeting that we had three years ago. So in some ways we have an excellent memory. But in other ways, we have a terrible memory. When it comes time to remember to take care of ourselves, when it comes time to remember that you actually know what you're doing as a private school leader, when it comes time to leave for the day at a certain time of day, when it comes to making sure that we're needing to remember boundaries between work and home, And so sometimes we have a great memory, sometimes we have a terrible memory. And on today's episode of the Private School Leader Podcast, we are going to discuss seven important things to remember as you lead your school. So before we get into that, I want to say thank you for listening to the podcast by giving you a free gift, and it's called The Seven Steps to Having Successful Meetings with Upset Parents. This guide is an 11-page PDF that gives you a step-by-step plan to have better meetings with the parents at your school. Every good coach has a game plan, every good teacher has a lesson plan, but too many private school leaders don't have a plan 
when they sit down to meet with an upset parent. Well, now you have a plan and you can grab this guide over at theprivateschoolleader.com slash meeting. And that's the seven steps to having successful meetings with upset parents. And you can get that at theprivateschoolleader.com slash meeting as a thank you for listening to the podcast. And I'd like to ask for a favor. If you've gotten any help, any value, any strategies from any of these podcast episodes, I would love it if you would share the podcast with two people in your life. One would be a private school leader in your life, and another would be an aspiring leader at your school. I think you have a good eye for those uh, employees, those teachers, those leaders in your school that are rising leaders. And I'd love it if you would share this podcast episode, this podcast in general, with them. And my passion is to help private school leaders all over the world, and you can help with that by um, passing it along to a couple of people in your life. So thank you so much for doing that. Okay, so today we are going to talk about the seven important things to remember as you lead your school. Number one, remember that this is emotional work. Number two, remember that you are where you are for a reason. Number three, remember that you actually do know what you are doing. Number four, remember that it is okay to make mistakes. Number five, remember that you are a human being. Number six, remember that you are enough. And number seven, remember that you are not alone. Okay, and before we get on to this list of seven things, I just like to remind you when I throw a big list at you that everything is available for you in the show notes. You can find those at the privateschoolleader.com slash episode 66. So again, you're probably multitasking, and I actually prefer that you do that so you can do something else while you're listening. And seven is a lot to try to remember, and so all that will be there for you in the show notes. So let's get started. The first thing that is important for us to remember as private school leaders is to remember that this is emotional work. So I want to tell you something that you already know. You have a very, very, very difficult job. You're asked to make wise decisions all day long that will be second guessed by the parents, the teachers, the board, or all of the above. You're tasked with keeping everyone safe. You must respond to every email, return every phone call, attend every meeting, handle every discipline problem, motivate and inspire every teacher, retain every student, beat last year's test scores, come in under budget, and keep every parent happy. And something that we often forget is that not only is it a very, very difficult job, but what we do is emotional work. And so how do we do all of those things that I just listed? Well, it takes passion and emotion and emotional intelligence and emotional energy, and that can be tremendously draining. It can also be tremendously fulfilling. But like I said, we have poor memories, and I want you to remember that what we do is emotional work. And I want you to take a moment just to think about the emotional price tag of the things that we do. And when I say each thing, I want you to hear an old-fashioned cash register, kind of that that bell, that cha-ching sound. Um, And the reason is because each of these things has an emotional price tag attached to it. You go into a store, and you look at a thing, an item, and you're like, oh, that, wow, that's great. That's really awesome. And then you look down and you see the price and then, mm, okay, now you have a decision to make. Is what you see worth the price? And I think that as private school leaders, what we do is we just continue to do and do and do and do and give and give and give and give. And we never think about the price tag, the cost that is attached to these things when it comes to our emotions. So what about having a rough meeting with a really upset parent? Cha-ching. Firing a teacher? Cha-ching. Expelling a student? 
at cash register noise. Everything has an emotional price tag. What about leaving to drive home after a three-hour board meeting that did not go well? Walking into your school building the morning after another school shooting was in the news. Wondering if you have enough cash to make payroll at the end of the month. Can you hear that cash register? What about this one? Your child that attends your school is struggling and their teacher is actually a big part of the reason that they are struggling. It has a price tag. It has an emotional price tag. And no wonder we take it home with us. No wonder school issues keep us up at night. No wonder the school issues affect our physical health and our mental health. No wonder the school impacts our relationships with our spouse or partner or children or friends or family. And so why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because we have bad, we have excellent memories in some areas and we have terrible memories in other areas. And I want you to remember about the emotional price tag and remember that what we do is emotional work. Okay, number two, remember that you are where you are for a reason. You're where you are for a reason. Your school has very specific needs. You are at your school right now to use your skills and experience and education and personality and passion and creativity and, and intelligence to meet those specific needs right now in this moment, this school year, today. And it's important to stop and think about the reason that you are there. You are at your school for a reason right now. And I often think about leading a private school as like being in a raft on the raging rapids in whitewater rafting. And that we have our helmets and we have our paddles and we're bouncing down the raging rapids. But we never stop and get out of the raft and stand on the shore and stop and think about the work that we do, we just keep doing the work. And if you think about the fact that you are where you are for a reason, it can actually energize you. It can give you a sense of purpose. It can help you revisit your compelling why. I've told you before on this podcast that my compelling why is the phrase throwing starfish. And the starfish story, very quickly, is that one day there was a man walking down the beach. And off in the distance, he saw a little boy. And that boy couldn't quite tell what he was doing. And so as he got closer, he saw that the boy was throwing things into the ocean. The man walked up to the little boy and said, what are you doing? And the little boy said, well, the tide is going out. The sun is coming up. And these starfish, if I don't throw them back into the ocean, they're going to die. And the man looked up the beach one direction and then the other direction. And he said to the little boy, there are thousands of starfish as far as you can see in each direction. How could you possibly make a difference? And the little boy bent down, picked up a starfish, threw it into the ocean and said, I made a difference to that one. That's the starfish story. And for me, at the top of my index card that I use every day for my must-do list, I write throwing starfish. That reminds me that I'm at my school right now for a reason. And that I have purpose. And that I have a unique set of talents and skills and intelligence and experience that are for this school right now and so do you so remember that you are where you are for a reason all right what's the third thing that we need to remember as private school leaders number three is remember that you actually do know what you are doing a lot of us deal with imposter syndrome and it's a real thing i did in a whole episode on it episode 27 i'll link that in the show notes 
And imposter syndrome, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own efforts or skills. It goes on to say that it's an internal belief that you are not good enough to be doing the role that you have and that you will be tested at some point and you will fail to live up to expectations and that you feel like a fraud and you feel like an imposter. And so if number three is remember that you actually do know what you are doing, then that means that we have to try to overcome imposter syndrome. Well, what are some tactical ways that we can do that? Well, first of all, um, if it's been a while or if you haven't listened to it, I would encourage you to go back and listen to episode 27 on how to overcome imposter syndrome. And I'll link that in the show notes at the private school leader dot com slash episode 66. And another thing that you can do to prove to yourself to remember that you actually do know what you're doing is in episode 37, where I talk about an annual portfolio. I'll link that as well. And it's really about starting two Google Docs, one called positive comments and one called accomplishments. And anytime you get any kind of positive comment in an email, in a text, in a newsletter, in a card, um, even verbally, you go in and you type that out, you put the person's name and you put the date. And then when you're feeling like you don't know what you're doing, you go back and you read your positive comments Google Doc. And recently, I not only went back and read my positive comments Google Doc from this year, I went back and read one from several years ago. If you create it, it will always be there. And then when you need it the most, you can read that. And the second Google Doc that you create is one called Accomplishments. And when you do things at school, when you check things off that list that are kind of a big accomplishment or maybe even a small accomplishment, just put it on that Google Doc because there will be days where you feel like you don't know what you're doing, where you can look at your positive comments and your accomplishments Google Docs, and you will see that you do know what you're doing. And then the second thing you can do is to take action and grow your skills. And you're taking action today just by listening to this episode of the podcast. We're on episode 66. That's 33 hours or more of content that will help you grow and hopefully motivate and inspire. And And it's, it's my goal to provide this professional development for you as a private school leader. And also you can go to the website, theprivatescolleader.com slash resources for all kinds of things that are there for you for free. So you want to stop feeling like an imposter. You want to remember that you actually do know what you're doing. Start a positive comments Google Doc, an accomplishments Google Doc, and continue to take action to grow your skills. Okay, we're up to number four on our list of seven things that private school leaders must remember. And number four is you need to remember that it's okay to make mistakes. We don't expect perfection from our students or our teachers. And we show them grace when they mess up. We say that's okay. You know, we talk them through it. So why do we expect perfection from ourselves as private school leaders? You, you and I both know that we rarely give ourselves grace. Rarely. And let's face it, we're going to mess up because think about it. Think about the sheer number of decisions that we make in a day or in a week. It's, the odds are so long. The odds are, it's, it's impossible for us to get all of those decisions right. We will make mistakes. But here's what we need to do is first of all, we need to remember that it's okay to make mistakes. And when we do make a mistake is to not beat ourselves up over it, to learn from it, kind of assess a little, little, little reflect, reflective practice. But then here's the key is to not attach emotion to the mistake and move on. And I'll say that again, because it took me years to be able to do this consistently. When you make a mistake, 
Don't attach emotion to it and then move on. We want to learn from it, but we don't want to define ourselves by the mistakes that we make. Everybody makes mistakes, including us, and we need to give ourselves some grace. And so number four is remember that it's okay to make mistakes. And number five on our list of seven things that all private school leaders need to remember, number five is remember that you are a human being. Okay, so I can hear what you're saying. You're like, uh, Mark, you know, the last time I checked, I was a human being. Pretty sure I'm a human being. Okay, but honestly, I think that we tend to treat ourselves like a piece of machinery and not like a human being. And I'll take that analogy one step further. I think that we treat ourselves like a piece of machinery, but then we don't take very good care of that piece of machinery. And I did an episode, episode 19, and the, que- the title of that episode was, Do You Treat Your Car Better Than You Treat Yourself? And if you think about it, um, a lot of us do. Um, so hear me out. You know, driving a car, let's just say, picture this, you're driving your car. There's no oil in the car. No oil. You do no regular maintenance. You do no tune-ups. And then you go, when it's time to put gas in your car, you go to some no-name, uh, no-brand name um, kind of rundown looking gas station and you put the cheapest gas that they sell into your car. And that's, that's, that's you driving down the road. No oil in the car, no maintenance, no tune-ups, and you've got the cheapest gas in town in your car engine. So is your car going to run? Yes, it will run. Might even run for a long time. But then one day it's just going to start coughing and banging and choking and it's just going to kind of drift over to the side of the road and it's going to come to a stop. And so if number five is remember that you are a human being, I'm using the analogy to get us to start thinking about What do human beings need? Well, we need regular maintenance. (laughs) We need to make those doctor's appointments and to get to the dentist, you know, and to try to move our bodies a little bit. And, you know, I talked about the cheapest gas in the world in in town. You know, what are we putting into our bodies and what's the long term impact of those meals that we eat on the run and all that fast food and You know, I'm not trying to shame you or make you feel guilty. I'm just trying to get you to see that you have to remember that you're a human being. And even if um, making change in any of those areas seems insurmountable, maybe it's just that, you know, your car, you, a piece of machinery, from time to time, it just needs to be turned off and you park it in the garage or um, if it's a piece of machinery to fact at a factory it, it it's turned off for the evening sometimes we just need to rest we need to take a break and i think as private school leaders that that's something that we do not remember to do so number five is remember that you are a human being and number six is remember that you are enough you're enough so we all have hopes and dreams for our school And we all have hopes and dreams for ourselves and our family and our finances and our relationship and our our health. And when there's a difference between where we are and where we want to be, then sometimes we feel like we're not enough. You know, so if that's at work with your school and you feel like you're not enough, maybe there's some imposter syndrome mixed in there. But also that happens in our personal lives where we feel like we're not enough. And then there's Instagram. And you've got in your feed, you've got some vacation photos from people that you know. And you're like, oh, man, look at that vacation. Must be nice. And and then you see a photo of a delicious dessert at a really nice restaurant. And you think, man, it's been years since I went to a nice restaurant. And 
then maybe you see a, a photo of someone and they're holding their Starbucks coffee and it, the caption is Starbucks run. And, you know, the hair is perfect. The makeup is perfect. The nails are perfect. And, and the, the lighting is perfect. And it's like, oh man, boy, that, they really have it all together. Or it could be that Christmas photo, that family Christmas photo and the kids in their matching outfits. And it's like, wow. And we compare ourselves to that. But you know, Instagram is not reality. Social media is not reality. It's curated reality. It's the best moment of that person's day or maybe even the best moment of that person's year. They're not posting the knockdown drag out fight that happened right before the photo was taken for the Christmas card. They're not showing the the two hours that it took to get everything just right um, to, you know, take that photo of the Starbucks run. Um, they're not showing the two years that it took to save up the money or to max out the credit card to go on that vacation or to go out to that fancy restaurant. You don't get a behind the scenes documentary on people's Instagram posts. It's not reality. It's curated reality. And when we compare ourselves to other people's curated reality, we're always going to feel like we're not enough and that we don't measure up. But I want to tell you something. You are enough. You are skilled. You are experienced. You are intelligent. You are the right leader that your school needs right now. And you are passionate and you are a creative servant leader and you are enough. And I want you to believe that. I want you to hear it. And then I want you to just take it and, and what are you going to do with that? If, if you believe that you're enough, think about what you could do at your school and how you could be better equipped to serve the kids and the teachers and the parents and the staff at your school. You need to remember that you are enough. And then number seven as we come to the end of our list, is remember that you are not alone. Here's the thing. Leadership is lonely. And leading a private school is very lonely because there are very few people that understand what it's like to have the responsibilities of a private school leader. Very few compared to the population of the world or the population of the United States. And I'm not saying that people out there that we, you know, we're not, I'm not comparing us to the, the emergency room nurse or the uh, person in the military or, you know, even a, a teacher in an inner city school where they're trying to meet the needs of, of a lot of students who are in this underserved um, community and have all kinds of real issues like where their next meal is coming from or if they're safe to walk home after school. So I'm not trying to compare. What I'm saying is, is that being a private school leader can be pretty lonely. And you can't really vent to people at work. Um, it, it's hard to do that and maintain your integrity and your ethics. And we all try to be careful about venting too much to the people at home. But I just want to remind you that you're not alone. Um, you've got, hopefully, friends and maybe a spouse or a partner or children or extended family or friends or some combination of the above and they love you and and they can fill you up and they can just listen and I'm not even saying that you have to have someone in your life that you can talk to about all the stuff that happens at school that would be great but being lonely being lonely at school feeling lonely in your role as a private school leader I get it I've been there. I feel it. But I found that what we need to do is fill ourselves up in other ways. And one way is family, friends, spouse, partner, children. If you're a person of faith, it can be your church community or it can be your relationship with God. Um, It could also be this podcast. And I hope that if you listen, that this is a weekly reminder that there are others out there going through the same things. I'm going through the same things and people that I coach are going through the same things. And 
the hundreds of people that send in emails and share about what they're going through, they're going through the same things. And so you feel alone, but you're not alone. And then you do need to connect with other people who go through exactly what you go through. And there are ways to do that through affinity groups, through NAIS or ACSI or NCEA or whatever your um, organization is of your group of schools. And then I'm also working on an online community for private school leaders and for listeners of this podcast. And I'm hopeful that I can launch that later this year and you'll you'll hear all about it here on this podcast so that you can connect with other leaders in that community. It feels like you're alone, but you're not alone. Fill yourself up with the people and your in your life and the things in your life that energize you and reach out and try to make those connections with other people at other schools that are going through the same thing that you're going through. So let's wrap it up. What are the big takeaways? Seven important things to, for you to remember as you lead your school. Number one, remember that this is emotional work. Number two, remember that you are where you are for a reason. Number three, remember that you actually do know what you are doing. Number four, remember that it's okay to make mistakes. Number five, remember that you are a human being. Number six, remember that you are enough. And number seven, remember that you are not alone. And so I like to end every episode with a call to action. And I'd like for you to pick one of these seven things, the thing that you think that you need to remember the most. Write that on a post-it note and put it on your desk. So pick one, write on a post-it note, Put it on your desk and it will help you remember this week and hopefully for weeks in the future. So just in the way of conclusion for the podcast episode today, I want to remind you that I've created another free resource for you called the top six ways to protect your school from a lawsuit. This is a 10 page PDF that will help you to keep your staff and students safe and help keep you and your school out of court. Litigation is expensive, time-consuming, and extremely stressful, and this common sense guide will help you be more intentional and proactive when it comes to protecting your school, and you can grab the top six ways to protect your school from a lawsuit over at theprivateschoolleader.com slash lawsuit. And if you're getting value from the podcast, I'd love to hear from you. Shoot me an email at mark.o.minkus at gmail.com. And maybe let me know about a new strategy that you're using or a pain point. Just just hit me up at mark.o.minkus at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Please subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Uh, as I've mentioned before, the, the episode show notes are at theprivateschoolleader.com slash episode 66. And a new episode of The Private School Leader comes out every week on Apple Spotify, YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you would please rate and review the podcast, that helps the algorithm push this content out as suggested content to private school leaders all over the world. And I'm on Instagram at the private school leader and Twitter at the PS leader. And I would just really appreciate it if you shared this podcast with another leader in your life and an aspiring leader at your school. And I've been your host, Mark Minkus. It's a privilege to spend this time with you every week. I want to say how much I appreciate you and all of your hard work that you're doing as you serve your school. Thank you so much for taking some of your precious time to join me here today. And I will see you next time on the Private School Leader Podcast. And until then, always remember to serve first, lead second, and make a difference.